guys every week decided to fight. I mean, every freaking week. Um, so that kind of has me encouraged because I know these guys will fight uh, now that they're a little bit older, a little bit stronger, a little faster. So very excited about that. And you do have a lot of talent coming back to this team as you prepare for, for a game against West Charlotte. I, I looked at your quarterback, and, and Jeff looks great on film, right? This is the guy that looks like can make decisions, can, can be able to throw the ball. Uh, talk a little bit about what you can expect from a Pumas team offensively this year um, based upon versus last year. Um, honestly, it's, it's simple. It's not even really difficult. Guys can get lined up a little bit quicker now, you know, understand what decisions need to be made, what adjustments need to be made. Um, execute a little bit better from a physical standpoint. Because uh, a lot of times, again, it wasn't that we couldn't do it, it was just that physically, right, we are just a bit outmatched. So I think, again, we're, it's not rocket science, it's just more so guys will be able to execute a little better, a bit more maturity. I absolutely love that, that level of maturity. And again, as you guys, we start looking at home, you start off against West Charlotte. It looks like that's going to be a home game here at Palisades. Uh, talk a little bit about the environment heading into that. You've got a, a, a team in West Charlotte uh, that made a little bit of noise going into uh, the playoffs last year, being a conference champion. Uh, talk about how you prepare for that, how you prepare for game one, and making sure that that Puma environment uh, is going to be there uh, from the student body to cheer, these te to cheer your team on to, to hopefully a victory against the Lions. Uh, well, actual correction, Mike, we'll be playing uptown at Memorial Stadium on oh, oh. Saturday afternoon. Um, biggest thing, in my opinion, is just being well conditioned. It'll be hot. Uh, it's a 3 p.m. kickoff, um, so it's going to be extremely hot. Temperatures high, uh, so we just got to be a better conditioned team that day. Um, I think again, it's an extremely talented group, strong finish to the year, so they'll come out ready, ready to rock and ready to uh, pick up where they left off. But again, I think it's going to be more so again just, just, just maturity, making sure you're hydrated, making sure you're well conditioned, making sure you can get lined up and think when tired. Right, that's kind of always the complications in early August. Being able to think when tired and play through sometimes, you know, that heat. So uh, that's what we're looking forward to. And certainly, we know that's not just going to be hot on the field. It's going to be a hot ticket over Memorial Stadium against the Lions. That certainly brings a lot of fanfare uh, wherever they go with that level of tradition that I know that you're hoping to build uh, here at Palisades. I'll turn it over to the media that are here. Uh, and, um, you know, you started off the season against East Mecklenburg, and I had the chance to talk with Coach from East Mecklenburg, and, you know, he's looking forward to, to playing you guys as well about the contest that you had last year um, and how great a game that was. Talk a little bit about what we can expect um, from Philip O'Berry football this year and how you're building that program uh, to, to the level that we're going to continue seeing growth from the Cardinals. Sure. Uh, first, I'd like to thank everyone for coming today, and Coach Simmons for putting this on. I think this is an exciting event for players or coaches to be able to represent this conference. Uh, <clears throat> on my behalf for Phil Berry, I know we're excited uh, to have a full offseason this year under my regime and bringing a new coaching staff, uh, which I think is, is half of that. Right? I think it's uh, putting the right people in front of our kids on a daily basis to make sure that they're successful. Um, so that's been a big part of our offseason is getting the right people in the building. Um, I think the next best thing is being uh, the continuity that we have, right? I think being able to be together. We have not lost many kids um, to the transfer portal of high school football this year. Um, we've kept the right kids in the building that we want and we need to be successful. So for me, that's exciting. Uh, we are going to be a young group, but that young group is going to get a ton of experience fast for when we hit conference play. We feel like we'll be at a level we need to be to compete. I, I love a tale of two seasons. It felt like there was multiple seasons last year when I looked at the film on Myers Park. Uh, certainly the schedule was, was very, very difficult when you looked at the opponents uh, that, that you played. And, and we came out of the box a little bit, um, you know, played some tough games and, and some tough teams and came out on the wrong side of that. And then you turned it around. And then you're, you're on a roll, on a roll, and didn't quite finish the, the way that you wanted to probably last season. But the talent level is certainly there at Myers Park. So talk a little bit about what we can expect from a Mustangs football team. Uh, just about a year of, uh, removed uh, from a deep playoff run uh, about two years ago. Um, well, one of the things I think we can say, uh, you know, we are very much senior driven this year. So uh, what you saw last year, we played a lot of really good football teams, a lot of playoff teams. Um, and I think we took some bumps, um, but it was definitely room, room for growth. Um, I think the exciting part about our, our program this year is that we are um, kind of senior heavy. 
some of the, the spots that were senior heavy up front uh, on the offensive line were led by senior Thomas Wilson, uh, which is big time. And then your signal caller at quarterback is a senior who's, who's played a little football. He was out last year with the injury uh, about four games into the season. Um, he's extremely hungry to kind of finish a full season for us. So, you know, I think you, you take a lot from the, the learning pieces that we had last year. And I think the guys have been hungry. Um, you know, they've been doing an awesome job since the offseason, kind of getting prepped and ready. Uh, I think we're tired of going against each other at this point and ready to see an opponent, but I'm excited to see what they do. And I talked a little bit about this with, a, with uh, to, to build from those uh, tough losses last year uh, to go back to the playoffs at South Bank. Okay. Um, first of all, it wasn't a play call, and it was the referees. <laughs> 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 Um, you know, last year we had a bunch of seniors coming back, but 31 seniors last year. Game four against Cuthbert's and our three-year starting quarterback, Cam Reese, tears his ACL, meniscus, basically blows his knee up. Um, we lose that game, and he got hurt in the first quarter. Uh, and then you have some inconsistencies, you know, because you got, you know, the next week we're going to play a really good policy team over here. Um, we start Brock Griswold, quarterback, and he's had two days of prep. Right? Um, so, you know, you have, we have a plan for things like that. But I think what I looked at, when I looked at film, I think our red zone efficiency wasn't very good last year. I think once we got inside the 20, we had too many, we'd have a penalty. We'd have a bobble snap. We'd have just the inconsistencies. Um, you know, high school football, most of these guys are the same. Just who makes the least amount of mistakes and who can capitalize on the other team's mistakes. Um, I thought our defense played as well as they could last year, um, being put kept behind the eight ball a lot by our offense. Um, so I think taking that next step and getting back to the playoffs, um, I think it's just through the hard work and the consistency and the things that we're doing in practice day in and day out. Because our practices are really, really hard. Um, the guys know that Friday nights should be like your, your easy night, right? So we make it so hard Monday through Thursday that Friday night is their kind of they're kind of a relief that we don't have to practice. Um, and we've changed a lot of things. Um, I had five new coaches. I had a couple coaches that left. One got a head coaching job. One went uh, to Puerto Ridge to be closer to his family that had been there with me since year one. Um, so I'm coaching some of the coaches on the consistency part of it so they can filter down to the kids. So I think that's a big thing, just being consistent with the work that we're doing. Yeah, I mean, last year we had a really strong senior class. We had 32 seniors, really some really good players. I think we had nine kids going to play college football. Um, and, you know, the expectations were high for them. They had uh, high expectations for themselves. We always try to win the conference championship. And, and like you said, we want to make a deeper run in the playoffs. I think we've been in the playoffs consistently, but we haven't gotten past the second round. So we're trying to get up with the, you know, the top tier in the state and, and start making deeper pushes in the playoffs. So last year, you know, in some of those games that didn't go our way, like you said, we were, we were in most of them and they were close games and competitive. Um, I think we learned a lot about how to deal with adversity. We talked about it a lot. Um, you know, in the first game that we lost, we had some, uh, you know, just some bad chemistry going on on the sideline when things weren't going our way. We, we talked, from, talked about that and learned from it. And I think our kids who are seniors this year um, saw how the seniors last year handled that. And now that they're in their shoes, um, you know, they, they took the good things from that leadership class took some things that they want to do differently and do it their own way. And uh, I think they learned a lot from those games. We talk about it a lot, just how we're going to deal with adversity. Because in the game of football, it's not going to go your way all the time. You're going to have, you're definitely going to battle adversity uh, in every game. Um, so we talk a lot about how we're going to deal with that. And hopefully that'll help us move forward into this season. This season Olympic, I think it was the best in school history, uh, really building on some of the success that, that was, was coming into the season. Talk a little bit about last year and the new standard um, at Olympic when you go undefeated and how you continue to build on that uh, to go deeper into the playoffs? Yeah, so uh, first of all, I want to say thank you to Palisades High School, Coach Simmons. Um, the communication has been great. Uh, I've been advocating for something like this uh, in the conference since I took over as a head coach, so it's really nice to see it. Um, he actually did the leg work, I'm sure, along with his team of uh, people. And, uh, so far, man, so good. So this was very exciting. Um, last year, um, that was really tough. Nobody, including myself, thought, you know, we'd be 11-1 and one for the season. I mean, that's always the goal. But 
I mean, we went from 3,000 kids to 1,200 kids. And I see a lot of those faces right up there that I coach, man. We really miss those guys uh, a ton. Um, still do. Uh, but, I mean, the old cliche, man, you're coaching, you take it one week at a time. And, um, those guys did that and bought in. I mean, we actually had a really young and experienced team last year. Now, we were really strong in some areas. We had a college young receiver. I thought the best quarterback, uh, uh, definitely in the conference, uh, but one of the top quarterbacks in Charlotte last year, Elijah Holm, that went on to uh, wing it. Um, Matt, the, the, the thing is, it didn't start last year. I mean, since I've taken over, um, we've had winning seasons uh, consistently. Uh, you know, in, two, in the COVID season, 2021, we were conference champs, co-conference champs with AK and Providence. Uh, we lost one conference game to Providence that year. Um, the, the fall season, 2021, the JV won the conference championship. And then um, this year we won, uh, we had an undefeated season. Uh, and even in my first year in 2019, we had one conference loss. I was against Roger Kell uh, after taking over 3-18. Uh, so now I think just the expectation to win is there. Um, those guys really believe uh, that they're winners, um, they're tough. Uh, the culture, you hear about that a lot. Um, you know, we do practice hard. I know Joe ever said his practice is tough, but I would put mine right up there with his. Um, and those guys buy into it every day, man. Tough Tuesdays, you would think I was giving away free stuff. You know, the way that they get excited about Tough Tuesdays. And, um, you know, they just bought into the brotherhood thing and, and um, seem like they're having a lot of fun. And I think that's what turned, this, turned into some wins. Sorry, guys, I'm over here. If you knew what was going on backstage to get that podium set up, I mean, this up, <laughs> set up, you'd be shocked. I'm sweating. I got to go to sleep. All right, my back. Go ahead. <laughs>